Welcome to the Kingdom Culture Center. Yours truly here, W.R. Lucci. Now, I'm going to help some of you out that's listening to my videos. Um, and I'm going to continue on this mindset of um, the kingdom and the corruption and the beginning. And I, I'm, I'm going to kind of deal with that. I want you to understand it to the full ex extent of understanding the kingdom. Not everybody can understand the kingdom concept uh, because God has to get open to your mindset for that. And a lot of people don't have that. They still are stuck on the introduction of religion and being a religious mindset. There's a difference. There's a difference. But first of all, I want to tell you this, that um, we, we've heard several leaders that have taught on the kingdom and the kingdom government. And one of them was uh, Stanley Jones. Many of you may have heard of him. Many of you may not have heard of him. It was long before uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. Now, some people think that Dr. Miles Monroe may have started that. No, he didn't. First of all, I want you to know that the, the kingdom mindset and the kingdom uh, government was first implemented by God. And he relinquished that over to certain individuals. One of them was Dr. Cha, uh, Stanley Jones. The other one was Dr. Miles Monroe. And this because um, this is just my thinking behind this, my thinking. Uh, because God wants people to understand, uh, the Lord God wants people to understand that it's not uh, a religion. His kingdom is not a religion. It's a government. Now, I've, I've mentioned this on several occasions in my videos that um, um, John the Baptist, uh, when he spoke, he said the kingdom of God is at hand, not a religion. When Jesus spoke uh, after him and after he left to the wilderness. He says the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, is at hand. So it's a government. Now, Isaiah gave you that. I want you to understand it's important that you understand that. The Constitution gives you all of that. You go to Isaiah, the ninth chapter, and uh, the sixth and seventh verse. Man, in fact, I, I'm, I'm going to go to that. And I want you to um, understand it. It's, it. it's a must. You must understand it. We turn to Isaiah, the ninth chapter, for those of you who has your constitution at hand. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, and the uh, sixth and seventh verse. I'm going to read, okay, and you follow me. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. By the way, this is future. There will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it, judgment and justice. From the time for from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, to, to help you understand this, remember this one thing. God's time, measured time, is not like our time. Totally different. He says one day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is one day. Why is that? Because he lives in time. 
He's the God of the heavens, of the universe. Now, let us go on. I made a few notes on, on certain things here that I want you to understand. When, when the Lord God created the Garden of Eden, he created a perfect environment. What is the perfect environment? Was it uh, the trees? Yes, that was a part of it. The water, the, the animals. Uh, let me, let me, let me go and go, go back. So I want you to understand this. It's very important that you get that and understand what the first kingdom is. It was perfect, but God created mankind with his own will, not, not something that he, man was a puppet. But he created him the, the, the ability of choice. He could choose. And what he asked was obey, listen, obey my command. And remember, when the king speaks, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. We wouldn't be having this conversation if the first man, Adam, would, obey, would have had obeyed the father and took charge like he was supposed to. So, you know, no, uh, brothers, don't blame it on the woman. You'd be totally out of whack. It was the man's choice. Adam made the choice to follow his wife. Now, I'm going to show you how things are coming to this point now. That in this world in which we live, and those of us who are born again of his spirit, of the king's spirit, we're not of this world. We're in the world, but we're no longer of this world. We have the spirit of the Lord, and we have the ability to choose. The devil can't make us do one dog, one thing that we don't want to do. When you have his spirit residing in your mortal body, you make the choices as the Holy Spirit guides you and leads you. That's the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, you'll find uh, that that doesn't exist amongst the people in the world. They don't have that power because they don't have the Holy Spirit. A lot of religious people who call themselves uh, Christians and live a certain life. And, 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 and I, I want to say this thing too. People, just because you attend a religious institution that you call church and you have people to pray for you, everybody don't know how to pray. Matter of fact, very few people know how to pray. Because when you ask somebody to pray for you, you're, you're assuming that they have the Spirit of God residing in their lives that they can connect to the Father. Everybody don't have that. Now, you know, if you want to write me or email me and say, Hi, you know, I'm just telling you what it is. It's the Spirit of God that resides in you, that came from the Father that resides in you, that gives you that connection. You are a kingdom citizen. That's, that's very important. It's very, very important. Now, I, I want to make some points here. How can you differentiate between a religious mindset and a kingdom mindset? How can you differ that, to differentiate that? Put it apart. I'm going to let you, I want you to think that over for a second. How can you do that? Well, let me assist you in that. A person with a religious mindset usually is tangled up to the point of concerns for what's in this world. They, <laughs> they get tied up, they get concerned about what's in this world, what's going down, and they refer to God's constitution as the Bible. They have this thing where 
You have to go to church. My wife said something to me the other day that was very important and very enlightening. Because since I've been down here, you know, people always refer to you when you, they talk to you, a lot of these religious people, and they always ask you in the conversation somewhere along the line, do, what church do you attend? As if I had to go to some religious institution and connect to the Father. And I found that uh, very uh, distracting in the middle of the conversation. What church do I go to? And I told them I don't attend any church. Well, my wife gave me the lowdown on that when I say that. They look at me as, uh, she says, some people look at you as a heathen, as whatnot. See, that's judgmental. I don't judge anyone. For them to judge me because I don't pretend that they're religious institution, I'm filled with his spirit. I love the Lord with all my heart. My wife does. My son does. His wife does. My daughters do. And I walk according to his word. I live according to his word. I stay in the word. In the morning when I get up, and I have to, and the Holy Spirit deals with me on every level. So I want you to understand this one thing. When you hear somebody refer to the Bible, God's constitution as the Bible, you know they don't have a clue what the kingdom is. This is for future reference for you. Now, this is not a condemning uh, saying by knowing you don't condemn them. No, you don't do that. They just haven't gotten there yet. I used to use the term Bible for the longest. I used to think religion, you had to go to church. I used to think you had to pay tithes. But Jesus never mentioned that throughout the whole New Testament. What he did say is give to the poor. Some people still stuck on that, even though you tell them, I don't try to change them. Let them be. That's not my affair. My affair and objective and my assignment is to let you know that this is a very corruptive world. And the God of this world is the prince of the air, Satan. Now, you cannot believe in God and yet not believe in the devil because the devil came from heaven. He, I mastered a, a rebellion. It didn't work, but that's what he did. And he was kicked out. Understanding the kingdom message is knowing that you only have to answer to one individual the God of this universe, and you have to approach him with, by using his, the, 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 the king's name, his son. Now, G, keep in mind this. Why do you think the Lord God had his son come down here? His son was the last recourse for all mankind. Did you know that Noah, when he got destroyed, the earth with water the first time. Please understand this. That that was the last time it was ever going to be destroyed by water. He destroyed the earth because of the corruption of the earth. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out here a little bit. You know you'll 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 find a lot of this out if you go into Genesis, and take the time. Take the time to study the first 12 verses, the first 12 chapters of the Constitution, and you'll find that his kingdom, from the Genesis to that point, his kingdom was Perfect. From one, he got to Adam and Eve. I want you to understand this one thing. 
The kingdom of God now resides in you. Jesus made that very clear. He even told Nicodemus, you can't even see the kingdom unless you are born of his spirit. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I have to go to this because I want you to, I don't like to give you anything in part. I want you to see what I'm talking about um, and understand what I'm talking about. You go to John, the third chapter of the Constitution. He was speaking to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a religious ruler of the Jews. Listen to this. I'm going to read from the third chapter, starting and follow me as I read. It's very important. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with you. He goes on to say, Jesus replied, listen, listen to the king's reply. Jesus answered and said to him, most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What do he mean by born again? That's not a religious saying. Remember, those that worship, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What is truth? His word is truth. That's why I stand firmly on his word. His word is truth. We must know how to conduct ourselves according to his word. When you have the Holy Spirit residing in your mortal body, and many people don't know what, don't have a clue what the Holy Spirit is. They think by because they attend a religious institution, attend, go to church every Sunday or Wednesday night, that they have the Holy Spirit. No! He will guide you and lead you into all truth. He is the teacher. He is the governor. He is the one that guides you and leads you. You have to submit your will to his will. Once you do that, he will open up doors and, and thoughts and, 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 and it all coincide, con, 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 it, it's all in line with his word. All in line with his word. Listen to what else he goes on to say. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? And this is a question that many people in the church world today who calls themselves quote unquote Christian, they really are saying in their attitude. You know, when I was growing up as a child, I used to see people jump all around the church, and I was with my grandmother on my mother's side, and they used to jump all around this hot stove in the church and whatnot, and they used to kick up and jump over pews and everything, and, you know, and they called that the Holy Spirit. Oh, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was probably a lot of anxiety they wanted to get rid of. But the Holy Spirit is intelligent. It reveals his word to you. So when you walk upright and you get that spirit, his spirit in you, guess what? You are a kingdom citizen. Look, I'm going to have to go now. And, but on the next session, which will be maybe a few weeks from now, I want you to understand this one thing. There's power in his word. Remember one thing I always say. Your faith in the Lord Jesus is your greatest asset in the kingdom. Till next time.